You're listening to the City World Radio Network, high definition digital radio broadcasting from the city to the world. www.cityworldradio.com. once again for the Johnny Mandolin Show, broadcasting live from New York City, here on City World Radio and simulcast on Italian American Radio. Hey, we're having a good time tonight because I have two great people in the studio. I have Artie the Cigar Guy. We're going to talk about cigars tonight. And I have co-hosting my good friend Gordon, who's also a uh, religious cigar smoker. We That's our religion. And, uh, and we're having a good time, so uh, stick around. You're going to listen to us all here on the Johnny Mandolin Show. That's our theme song, Anello's Blues, on Sexton Records, the great Doc Anello on sax, and me having fun on the guitar there. Uh, that opens our show, and uh, we have a wonderful show tonight. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Of course, I want to welcome everybody to the air, uh, all our listeners around the country and around the world. Um, say hi to our friends in California. We have a lot of listeners out there. Our good friend Phil Gonzalez, who uh, listens to our show and uh, sometimes phones in. And uh, then also our friends in Miami and in Chicago. We get a lot of great emails. I appreciate that. And in Rome and, uh, and in Brazil and Serbia and all the other emails I get. We really appreciate those. So keep them coming. Our show tonight is brought to you by Sexton Records. And that's C-E-X-T-O-N, Sexton with a C. It's sexton.com. Great jazz. So thanks for sponsoring our show tonight. So to the mic, I want to bring uh, our good friend, Artie the Cigar Guy and Gordon. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Yeah, it's fun, huh? We have nice weather in New York for a change. Finally. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's not too hot. It's not too humid. There's a breeze. It's I, I'm so I excited. It's Everything really good. Just it's really change, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's funny. I was in California for a couple of weeks, and the weather was just like this. And I, all my friends in New York were saying, it's 99 degrees. It's hot as hell. It's humid. And I said, well, it's nice here. And then they got back here. I brought the weather with me. You know, whenever, whenever you see California in the movies, it's always like, hey, bro, let's go to the beach. You know, and, like, it's like people always in their bikinis and stuff walking around. But then at one point I realized that California is the size of 
pretty much the whole East Coast. Mm-hmm. So that you know, you, it gets co- it gets freaking cold there too. You know what yeah. I mean? You think everyone's always at the beach, but it's yeah. they get there's pretty, not in San Francisco. It, there. Exactly, yeah. it gets pretty. It's, it's, see, I, I, that's that's just something that I always thought just from Hollywood, always yeah. telling me like you know, oh, we're gonna go to the beach, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I haven't been to the beach in many years, but <laughs> <laughs> I do live in California. Um, yeah, who was it? Mark Twain who said the. The, the coldest winter I ever experienced was a summer in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. So Not wrong. Not wrong. Yeah. We, we have some good times together, all our friends, and we have some wonderful cigars. And uh, I have been on a, uh, a cigar buying kick and enjoying them. So uh, we're going to talk tonight about some of our favorite cigars and also some new things. And um, I always love to bring Artie in because Artie is – a very schooled young man in cigars and has really seen the business develop and has a lot of knowledge. So what's new and what are you seeing today? Well, thank you so much for calling me young man. I appreciate that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, I'll, t- I'll tell you this much. Uh, as of recently, um, as far as if we're talking about laws and all that, because sometimes when I come in, we bring up laws. I'll, I'll save that for a bit later, but it's not looking really good as far as cigars go and uh, all that. But um, as far as for me personally, uh, what I what I've recently really fallen in love with, and I've been smoking a lot and really contemplating as I smoke, is Lanceros. Are you familiar with that size? I've I have heard of them, but no. Yeah, it's about it's it's usually around like a seven some seven uh, between seven eight inches and about like a thirty eight ring gauge. Yeah, it's quite re- quite slim. Y- yeah, yeah, it's small, but you know what I realize is you um you really you really taste the wrapper a lot, and the blend is condensed, so a lot of the static is gone and. Um, the reason I bring it up is because, uh, funny enough, um, Lancero was actually uh, Castro's favorite size, too, mm. for that exact reason. And, like, for instance, the brand Cohiba, right, when, uh, when Cohiba was started in 1962, uh, that, was, that was the first time they produced a Lancero size mass production. You know what I mean? Other than just guys rolling in the, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in a warehouse somewhere like, hey, you want this? I'll roll this for you. But that was the first time they actually mass produced one of them. I got to try one. Oh, my God. No, it's it's actually really something else. Now, a lot of people are turned off by it, you know, especially guys that are like size queens, you know, like big ring gauges. Um, they like a lot of smoke. And obviously, Lanceros don't give you that. But mm, if you're somebody that wants to concentrate on flavor, uh, it's something that a lot of people really do overlook just because they feel like it's, you know, maybe I even hear sometimes say that it's like somewhat like a, like a lot, a lot of like very feminine. So people don't want to be smoking that, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because when they think of a cigar, you think of like, a, ah, yeah, I see, you know what I mean? Like you're, you, when you think of like a mafioso or a gangster smoking a cigar, it's usually this big fatty, you know what I mean? But at the same time, one of the most badass cigar smokers in history, arguably, Fidel Castro, you know how many assassination attempts he survived, <laughs> right? He loved Lanceros. He loved thinner, thinner sizes, and uh, that's why, like for instance, uh, come back to Cohiba when Cohiba first like produced uh, some more sizes. They were all thin, small sizes, just yeah. because that was his preferred thing, and he would give them out to diplomats and stuff, you know. Yeah. So, uh, just like I feel like the interesting history of Lanceros uh, mixed with like all the Lanceros I've been smoking recently, some aged, some not. Uh, it's just something that's been super duper interesting because I feel like for a long time, I have spoken about Lanceros, but I never really gave them the credit that they deserve. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, um, there's a lot of factors in a cigar: the wrapper, the filler, or you know, the leaf inside. And uh, we don't always talk about ring gauge. And so, I guess a good question is, how important is that really? Um, for well, I mean, it's 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 difficult to say. I think it's pretty much everything, right? Because the bigger the ring gauge, the more leaves you need to use. Uh, the more leaves you need to use, the more... So, like, le- let me put it to you this way. Let's say I have a 60 ring gauge and a 30 ring gauge, right? Uh, it's not it's not going to be just a half the leaves, you know what I mean? No. Because you can't just double up on the leaves and make it fatter because then it just will not burn right. It You actually need to manipulate the blend to make it kind of work. You know what I mean? So it's actually, it's actually, it, it matters. It matters all, all the way through. Like it, that's why some cigars, like for instance, one cigar that I love, the Tabernacles Nicaraguan, made by Foundation Cigars. I, I like their cigars. I like the Robusto and 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 I like the uh, you know the Toro. But the Lancero is like the best. I remember I just smoked one the other day and I was like loving every second of it. Burned my fingertips when I finished yeah. it. You know? I mean, I know a lot of it is is uh, you know personal choice mm-hmm. and. For a lot of our listeners who aren't cigar smokers, the ring gauge basically means the the thick the roundness, the thickness mm-hmm. of the cigar. Mm-hmm. And um, I know that most of the cigars I get are, are shorter because I don't have a lot of time to smoke mm-hmm. them, and uh, about the size of a nub mm-hmm. or maybe uh, uh, like a Hemingway bestseller. 
Ooh, and yeah, and those are one of my favorites. And then also, they're not real big and fat, although I do like a big ring gauge every now and then, you know. Um, I think it does affect the taste somewhat, you yeah. know, in the, the size of the ring. And not just the size of the ring, but you brought up the Hemingways, uh, the shape too. Like those Figurados are awesome. And the reason they're awesome is because it helps your palate, uh, like, alchemate to the c cigar way better. In the sense that you start off with like a little small ember and then it builds up, right? And the difficult thing about those shapes is if you don't know what you're doing, it could burn strange really easily. Mm -hmm. I think you know what I'm talking about. Like yeah. if you if you miss it by a little bit, scorch the, scorch the side, that's it. It's going to canoe yeah. like crazy. But if you do get it just right, you get this kind of evolution with the, with the flavor that you wouldn't get if you just lit up a normal cigar, which I think is awesome. I love those sizes. Yeah, yeah. I usually get my, my ultimate standby is the... Uh, it's a Arturo Fuente Hemingway, and the size is called Bestseller. Yeah, yeah. They make short story bestseller signature, but the bestseller is just a really awesome cigar. I'll, I'll tell you, if that's if you're a fan of that shape, you know something that you might want to dig in, like check out. It's called Quaba Divinos, which is a Cuban. It's a Cuban brand, and uh, some companies do make this Salomones, like kind of like Hemingway, like you know, like the little little figurados. But this company uh, specifically only makes that shape. In different sizes. Mm. So the Divinos, is it called Divinos? It, oh, Distinguidos. No, no, wait, hold on. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm so bad with the names. I know that the company is Quaba. I believe it is Divinos, and they're just like these little guys. You know what I mean? But they have that little that little Figurado shape, mm -hmm. and it's a Cuban tobacco. It's unbelievable. Very, very good if you like those. If you like those have, have you experienced any of those? Yeah, I mean, uh, I was first. I was a big ring guy, you know, and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, my name's Gordon. I. I ne gravitated to the Gordos, right? so, <laughs> but you know when I uh, so aficionado, they were uh, they were saying it's a real shame that everybody's smoking big cigars now and you're really missing out on the flavor. So I started to to go for the smaller ones, and you know I love the Tabernacle, which mm -hmm. you're talking That's about. That was, yeah, and I'm just thinking, you know, I tried a couple of Lancero sizes, and I thought, yeah, this is it's also a little bit of an easier smoke. Mm -hmm. You're not sort of continually drawing a lot mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a lot to be said about that. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, th th we're fortunate that we have so many different options, so many different mm -hmm. brands, so many different styles, mm -hmm. and um, every time that you kind of discover a new one, it's 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 a little joy to find a cigar that you didn't know existed, and suddenly, or a size, or a ring gauge, and suddenly it's like, wow, your eyes are open to that. In a way, it's a lot like um, well. trying different really good wines, mm -hmm. where uh, you might have a California Cab or a um, something from Italy like a... Nero Diavolo from Sicily or Montepulciano or Abruzzo, and you just go, wow, this is a really different but great taste. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you, you, you know, um, so I just want to preface by saying I'm not a wine guy at all, but you mentioned a couple of different, like, regions, and it's all about the soil, if you think about it. Like, right, you taste all these different wines. The, the grapes take, like, the kind of quality of the soil. You could taste a little bit of the earthiness. Same thing with tobacco, right? Depending on where you grow it, it gains a different uh, – a different – uh, like kind of uh, characteristic and that's what's so fantastic about it so an example I could take let's say a seed that let's say Connecticut broadleaf which is grown here in America I can grow it somewhere in Africa uh, like where they grow Cam Cameroon leaves and get a completely different leaf you know kind of like something with uh, uh, characteristics of a Connecticut broadleaf but some fr flavor profiles that you would get from that African soil or maybe like Indonesia has very powerful like uh, volcanic soil you know get real earthy flavor chocolatey f notes you know what I mean? Nicaragua has similar soil to that, but I would say Indonesia is even more volcanic. Grow that there, and you'll get something completely different. And that is the beauty of the cigar industry, that uh, it, it, even if there's somebody willing to, like, push it, push the limit, you know, like, try new things, there's always going to be new stuff to, to, to go with because we're pretty much, you know, it's it's almost like um, breeding. It's, it's where you grow it. You know, th we have the whole planet and tons and tons of different seeds to work with. And uh, if we ever run out of seeds, we can just freaking make new ones. You know what I mean? Thank you, yeah. science. You yeah, know? yeah. No, it's that's wonderful. That's really true. And, um, um, you know, just like I said, like wine, you, you are, you know, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. So as mm -hmm. those cigars eat exactly. the nutrients, mm -hmm. you're right. They get you're absolutely right. And there's so many new countries to have uh, try from, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Ecuador mm -hmm. and Brazil and Mexico. And mm -hmm. there's just people mm -hmm. that are planting. There is a dark side, a little bit of a dark side to it. You know what I mean? Because, um, uh these countries that have all this like agriculturally like lush land you know what i mean let's say they start putting tobacco there and now it's like less land for food for people to eat always a compromise and that, yeah. yeah and that's a huge problem because let's be honest the people that benefit from the cigar tobacco are not the people that are rolling it growing it, yeah. you know what i mean like it's 
the guys like us hanging out here in the city, in New York City, you know what I mean? Um, on top of that, tobacco is actually quite an uh, interesting plant where when you grow it, um, it's very difficult afterward to grow other crops because mm. it the, it changes the composition of the soil in a way where it's only like really beneficial to tobacco. Um, the reason I know this is because I own a farm in Moldova and I begged my family there when I lived there for about a year and a half to grow some cigar tobacco I had seeds with me. And uh, and they wouldn't let me because they're like, it's going to mess everything up. Yeah. Yeah, it changes the <laughs> Buy some land, you know, stop bothering us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it changes the dynamic of the soil. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, sorry if I'm being a bummer here, but I just want to give both well, sides, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know, and I think cash crops versus food crops, mm -hmm. it's always, that's just a challenge. And it's about mm -hmm. distribution of wealth and it's mm -hmm. about, you know, keeping sensible limits mm -hmm. uh, wherever they're planted. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, you mentioned Moldova. I mean, I... Is there to cigar tobacco being produced in yes. Eastern Europe? C Wait, cigar? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't believe so. Cigarette for mm -hmm. sure. Cigarette cigar tobacco, for sure. no. Yeah. It's just because um, the climate is okay. So the climate is actually not bad, right? Because you, you, maybe it needs a little more sunshine. The main city of Moldova where I lived is very similar to New York climate, which isn't particularly no. the best for growing those kind of crops. It's all about day night cycles and all that. Um, temperature, you know what I mean, like the composition of the soil migration of bugs you right. know what i mean and absolutely so many different because the thing about cigar tobacco is you don't want to put pesticides in it right so it's very sure. important how you how you grow this tobacco you know using the best kind of techniques to keep away all the pests without actually putting pesticides on it you know sometimes you got to kind of do like mild pesticides just to you know because you could lose a whole field mm -hmm. you know what i mean but the, the the main key the main whole shtick of tobacco cigar tobacco is this is natural this is organic this is the nitty gritty. This is the way they've been doing it thousand, six thousand years ago, before America, you know, before Columbus, all that. This is, uh, this is, this is. We're gonna keep that going. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's pretty much. It, it is. It, is it, it hasn't really changed that much, other than the fact that it's just become mass produced. You know, instead of a guy just growing a couple crops in his backyard, it's just become a whole bigger operation. I think that has definitely changed. But if you're talking about the techniques for aging, growing this and that, fermenting, it's actually pretty much all the same. The same thing, you know, the techniques really haven't changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's an old science, and, oh, yeah. you know, and it's uh, constantly, they're finding new, new ways to do things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always fascinated by watching a cigar roller do it by hand, mm -hmm. you know, and put the leaves together mm -hmm. and create what looks like a big s bunch of stock of, mm -hmm. of these big brown leaves, and mm -hmm. out comes this beautiful cigar. I love that, because yeah. I, I do a bit of rolling at home, and whenever I roll in front of people, it always looks like shit. You know what I mean? They're like, what is this garbage? And I'm like, wait, wait until the finale. Because what, th what happens is you bunch up the leaves, right? So then you have this, like, but just giant bunch of, like, leaves to put together. And that looks nothing like a cigar. It looks like a dude holding leaves, right? And then you have to put them in a, in a, in a binder. And then they just look like a lumpy bunch of leaves. You know what I mean? Still nothing like a cigar. Maybe something like, like you would see in a cartoon. You know what I mean? Like a hand, like a yeah. cartoon cigar. And then, but then you have to take that and put that in a mold, right? And then after you put it in the mold... What you get is a very smooth tube, but it still has all these lumpy depressions in it, like because it's taking that lumpy tube and kind of like compacting it into a, a a smooth, nice and smooth, you know, you know, tube. And then you put on the final leaf, which is the wrapper, which is the most beautiful and the most delicious. Everything, pretty much, the creme de la creme of cigar leaves. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, it's the most expensive as well. And uh, then you put that on. You know what I mean? And then what you have after all that is this nice, smooth, beautiful-looking cigar. And that's when it just looks like a cigar, right at the end. Right. You know, everything before that looks like crap, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. No, it, it's truly an art form. And, I mean, when you think about it, there's not a lot of handmade products left in the United States. It's either being injection-molded or, or hammered out in China or, or you know, Vietnam. And uh, it's very hard to find handmade products. Every premium cigar is handmade. I uh, mean, yeah. you know, every really good cigar is not, it's not coming out of a machine like a cigarette. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I think that's really, really good to know, you know? Well, he, he, you, want, you want to jump in on that or should I? No, I'm, I'm interested okay. in more. Yeah. So, uh, the thing is that recently they've kind of changed it around a little bit where you, you, you can actually make a hand-rolled cigar. And if, I know this is radio, so I'm doing quotation marks. <laughs> and, um, uh, but with the help of a machine, you know what I mean? And it's pretty much, you know, if I were to try to describe it, nobody would understand anyway. But you put in the leaves, you crank a lever, you apply a little glue, you crank another lever, boom. You got, like, 
a perfect thing, a perfect cigar. And here's the key. When you have – usually when you have machine-made cigars, it's usually short filler. Short filler is when you take the tobacco and just right. chop right. it up. Like yeah, and that sucks, right, because yeah. it gives inconsistent, inconsistent draw – um, inconsistent flavor. Uh, you know, it works in a cigarette, or whatever, but it does not really, really doesn't work in a cigar. And uh, so, so that that was the you know that's like cigarillos and like you know a company has like scraps, so they do like factory like output, like you know they 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 make a bunch of them you know with the scraps and they sell them for like two dollars a piece, but it's like you know really good tobacco you know aged for like years or whatever. Uh, but but like I said, that was what people you know that's what that was the distinction. But now. Now it's kind of like gone into this territory where, you know, it, it, it depends who you ask because it's the exact same technique as if you were doing it by hand, right? So you can't you can't really fault it for like because when you do a short filler, you're you have to compromise. You know, you have yeah. to you have speed, but you you have bad quality. In this case, I would say the quality is the same, if not a little better. So, so it's, a, it's a machine assist. Sometimes, sometimes I'm not saying all the time, but there is definitely such a thing. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it. You can look it up on YouTube. Like again, I can't describe it. It's, it's a weird contraption. It really is. Uh-huh. It's you know what I mean. It, it, it's something quite unique. But uh, there, there is something that, and and they do consider those hand rolled. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I um, um, we all always, at least for me and most of my cigar friends, tell me they always gravitate to their favorites. Mm-hmm. You always go back to what you know and what you love. But um, unless you're not experimental at all, um, I'm always looking for something new and different. I actually came across a little cigar, a really good cigar called a Padilla, mm. which was very good. I never had them before. A Habano wrapper. And I also recently had a Rocky Patel I really liked. It was a vintage mm-hmm. Rocky Wh- the Patel. Which one? 79. 1979. Seven, 1970. Yeah. I don't know. I really bad that one. Yeah, right. it's a, kind good of a stuff. rare one. It was good. Yeah. Nice. And, um, and uh, also... Um, um, uh, the La Gloria Cubana Series R. Oh, yeah, they're right. Uh, yeah, that's that's on the top of. My that's of after right. steak, like yeah. you have steak and potatoes, yeah. then you have that Series R. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, 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 or I like it with a glass of red wine. But I mean, red it wine. is truly. A, I I don't know what, I don't even know what wrapper that is. Do you? No. Uh, I think well, there's a r- natural and there's a Maduro. Which yeah, one? Yeah, not are the you? Maduro, the R. The natural. R, so that's just the yeah. natural. It's um the, the the La Gloria Cubana is, uh, Nicaraguan, I believe. Yeah. So it's just it's all Nicaraguan. Yeah, it was very good cigar. Right, and that's uh, Carrillo, right? The Perez Carrillo, it's his. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He left though. Yeah, you yeah. No, no. He's. I mean, he sold that brand off. Yeah. 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 So, but he started it off, and now it's General's. It's General. And, and you, you, um, you've had those. Cigars. Yeah, I, I, I'm preference uh, is the Maduro, as you know, I'm a, I like the Maduro wrap. I, sec- I second that. Oh, Maduro's <laughs> great. Yeah. I like the Maduro too. I just can't have too many. Of yeah, them. no, they're, they're it's definitely a stronger bite, but yeah. I've had both, and I. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. But I like them both, but I definitely prefer the Maduro. Yeah, the, the Maduros are just so great. They're just a little yeah. powerful. Yeah. Um, and uh, after a couple of those, you start, I don't know, tripping. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe stick you, to you one. You guys, yeah. you guys ever had the Cuban? No. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, the Glory Cubana uh, makes a Cuban. And so they have big, fat ones. But the bigger the bigger ones, the ones that are like regular sizes, are, are like regional editions. So they got the Spain, which is like a like a little um, petit robusto. Then they got like a, six, I don't know, it's it's like a fifty four by th- by five and a half or something. It's like much bigger and it's like a Swiss edition. But then you have the normal release ones, which they're slowly cutting down. But all the normal release ones, like the, they're called the Medio de Auto, which is the gold the gold medal, yeah. and the, like the number one, two, and three, and uh, they're all thin. They're all like like I, I bought a box of them and they're like thin as hell. But I'm telling you. Uh, you, I went into this unprepared, like thinking, you know, like okay, another Lancero. Let's do this. This shit is tough. It is tough. It is wow. a strong, strong. It's arguably the strongest Lancero I've ever had in my life. It, wow. it really beats up your palate like no other cigar with that size ever has. Even that Tabernacle that we spoke about. Mm-hmm. That it, that that's a dark ass cigar, but this thing is vicious. Yeah. Very vicious cigar, but the flavor is just unimaginable. What real secret is when you're smoking that, you need like a really stiff ass drink mm-hmm. to clean your palate, and you're, you're good. Yeah, you know what I mean. But if you don't have that stiff ass drink, it's gonna oh, it's it's, yeah. it's strong. It beats you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's funny because I always I always um, drink when I smoke. Like if I have a cigar, I, I have to number one. My favorite drink in the world usually is seltzer. Mm. Uh, carbonated water, salt, you know, pub soda yeah. or New salsa. York does it best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it's funny. I was just in California, and I went to about 
seven different convenience stores and nobody had seltzer. What? No, it's nobody had seltzer. It's, and it's the craziest thing. It's the same in the Toronto area. Yeah. I go and first thing they don't call it seltzer, but secondly, when you it's like club soda. That's it. Right. And yeah. there's no well, I couldn't even find club soda in some of these places. They had, you know, all these different juices and drinks right. and Gatorades and uh, Coke and Diet Coke and I don't drink any, you know, flavored sodas, but that's so good, weird. And I love that's to have a strange a thing. And yeah. secondarily, it has to be with some alcohol. Uh, my favorite go-to is a glass of red wine, preferably Italian, but not necessarily. But also, I've recently, very recently, discovered um, whiskeys, both mm. Scotch and bourbon. Mm. And and this is new to me because I never really drank any hard liquors. It's a little Our unusual for a cigar smoker to say I've never really. Uh, yeah. I really haven't because yeah. you know, I grew up in an Italian home where you had right. wine, and then afterwards you had sambuca or amaretto or a little. Uh, Maybe, um, you know, so, uh, Amaro. So you didn't really have a lot of those right. heavier liquors. And uh, I really never experimented with them. And most recently, well, not most recently, I'm so talking the last couple of years, I really uh, enjoyed my cigar with some, you know, uh, whatever, Johnny Walker Black or, you know, mm -hmm. something. I, I feel like when it comes to harder liquor, and I've had like a, uh, you know, a similar kind of thing going on too. I, I used to never drink them. I mean, no, actually, it's, it, I've drank them for like the last 10 years, but I remember not liking them at all. But uh, I feel like there's a certain point where you give in, you know what I mean? Like you, you kind of let, let the pain come, and, and, and then <laughs> after a certain while, you welcome it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a very like it, it's 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 kind of a weird dynamic. But and I then know you move further, and then there's nothing else will do. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Now you're like now you miss the yeah. old good old days. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I noticed, like because uh, you know I remember when I first started, you know, like I smoked smoke cigars, and people would give me like alcohol and like a whiskey or not, and I'd be like, I don't really do this, but let's try it. And you would try and you'd be like, this kind of, nah, nah, you know what I mean? Like, this hurts, like, this burns, like, what the hell? There's no ice in this, like, what's going on? Yeah. And then, you know, after a while, I, I, I won't lie, it's just kind of like trying to fit in, you know, you're like, you're like oh, yeah, I'll take some, sure, why not? Like, you know, get a buzz going, whatever. And uh, and then after a while, it's like, hey, can I, can I get a little bit of that? You know what I mean? Like, you start, and especially with cigars, the way it just, it's like a refresh button on your palate, it's amazing, you know what I mean? And, you know, eventually, you know, somebody's like, hey, you want a little ice in your whiskey? You're like, no, 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 back the fuck up. You know <laughs> yeah, I mean? like, yeah. you know, Get so, that out of here. You know what I mean? So, I, I do like it on the rocks, but, yeah, I know what you mean. You like it pure. Because you could you just taste, you taste everything. You taste yeah. absolutely every. You could, that's the, de it's like the deep dive. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. taking, it's like jumping into that pool of whiskey, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why I said, I think, um, I think um, a drink, whatever your drink is, but a drink with a cigar mm. can really enhance the flavor of that mm. cigar, mm -hmm. in particular whiskey or, in my case, uh, red wine. But, um, yeah, it's all good. Well, you listen to the Johnny Mandolin Show here. I've got Artie, the cigar guy, and Gordon here, and we're always having a good time talking. I would just want to uh, point out that we have a very good friend. His name is Bob DeRusso, and Bob has a group on uh, the meetup group. It's called uh, it's meetup.com, and it's called the friendly cigar group so if you're in new york or jersey or in the surrounding areas we usually get together and meet up once in a while or like twice a month and have a nice cigar get together if you'd like to join go to meetup.com look for the friendly cigar group bob de russo there's also a rooftop event this thursday uh coming up which is also online on meetup.com with the friendly cigar group um thursday night uh, get together, have cigars on the roof deck, which is beautiful in New York City in the summer. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, not to be missed. Yeah, yeah, not to be missed. And um, and I want to thank everybody for listening. But we're not going anywhere. We're going to be right back on the Johnny Mandolin Show. We're broadcasting live on City World Radio, and we are uh, also um, uh, broadcasting on Italian American Radio. And I want to thank Sexton Records for sponsoring the show. And we're going to be right back. We're going to have a little music. This is actually, we're going to play something on a brand new CD that I have. Uh, the the CD is called Tonight by Johnny Mandolin. And here's the title song. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Hey, that's off my new album tonight, and of course, the feature song tonight from West Side Story on Sexton Records. So we're back on the air here. We've got Artie the Cigar Guy and Gordon, <laughs> and also joining us all the way from California by the magic of the telephone is Phil Gonzalez. Hey, Phil. Hey there. Welcome. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Great, man. Really good, man. So um, uh, you said you have a few uh, cigar tidbits for us here. Yeah, I've got some. Uh, I've got uh, five fast rules to not looking like a total newbie when it comes to cigars. Mm. So, first one is that size matters. Selecting the si uh, cigar size is counterintuitive. Cigars with a narrower ring gauge are actually stronger than cigars with a larger ring gauge. The trick here is the tobacco to air ratio. Bigger ring gauge cigars are normally mellower than smaller ring gauge cigars. So if you're a newbie to this experience, a large cigar would normally be a bit milder, okay? Now, I've, I've got my notes here, so just bear with me, okay? All right. Okay, the second one is on lighting. So don't worry about matches or cedar spills or any of that here. You're most likely going to be using a lighter, torch, or flame. The same rule applies. You want to use the heat from the flame to light your cigar. Do not shove the foot of your cigar deep into the middle of the flame. You are not doing well in here, guys. Just light the cigar. Now, a bonus is to toast the foot of the cigar lightly prior to lighting it. It actually makes it easier and will light more evenly. And again, this stuff is, for me, it's great info because, you know, I'm not a regular cigar smoker. I'm, uh, I'm more of a special occasions type of cigar smoker. But um, so a lot of your newbies out there might be interested. But the, the third rule is you need to cut the cap off the cigar. That's the end closest to the cigar band. The rule of thumb here is less is more. It's better to cut too little of the cap than cut too much off and risk damaging the cigar's delicate wrapper. So remember, just the tip. Hmm, sounds like a circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, little religiousness there. Um, yeah, you're right, because if you cut off the end cap, your cigar's just going to kind of unfurl. And, um, exactly. And, and yeah, and, um, uh, absolutely. Um, and I think also that um, uh, when you're lighting a cigar, a lot, I've seen a lot of people take a torch lighter and just point it right into the cigar and just burn the hell out of the middle. And uh, not a good idea. Artie, what do, you, what do you know about this? You're a cigar expert mm -hmm. here. Uh, well, <clears throat> yeah, so pretty much the, the, here's what a lot of people uh, don't tend to understand. The hottest point of a flame is actually right above it. Right, not in the center of it. So, uh, uh, what you what, what you'd want to do, let's say, like personally, I wouldn't really use a soft flame unless I'm smoking a cigarillo. Um, that's just personal preference. Wow. Um, but let's say a torch, which I definitely do use all the time. Uh, what you'd want to do is you you'd want to keep it a fair distance away from the cigar. Like I said, just for the simple fact that the tippity top of the flame is way 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 hotter than the center of it. Um, yeah. I think I learned that in like sixth grade chemistry. So that's really the key. And also that'll give you a little bit, um, you know, more control over like how, how you actually do like the cigar, you know, uh, pretty much less chance of there being an accident, you know, burning the side. Uh, so then mm -hmm. it burns weird. Whenever a cigar canoes or burns weird, you know, if you, if you, let's say you toast the edge a little too much by accident, it, it actually does affect the, the taste a little bit more oxygen gets into the cigar. And it, you guys know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's always an extremely like, uh, it always ruins yeah. my ruins yeah. my experience, you know, so it's very important. And if I could jump in on yeah. another important tip with lighting, sometimes you're smoking the cigar, especially if you're new and so you're not sort of used to drawing on it and it, it's going out. When you go to relight it, if you're sticking the foot of the cigar right into the, the flame, the hottest part of the flame is about where your nose is. Mm -hmm, yep. And... Uh, <laughs> For those of us with facial hair, mm -hmm. that can result in some unfortunate situations. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sure. So well, Gordon yeah. and, and Artie both have mustaches, so mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to you don't want to light that on fire. No, <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it smells like burning hair for the rest of the day. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. Um, and uh, Phil and I are clean shaven. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Either way, it's yeah. not a pleasant. Oh, I know, I know. It has <laughs> yeah. a tip, burn the tip of your nose and mm -hmm. not fun. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things I discovered: um, a lot of cigars I buy, I buy online. And there's a lot of really good cigar, you know, there's uh, Holtz and there's um, um, Thompson and there's Cigar International. 
And uh, lately I've been, uh, my newest addiction is something called Cigar Bid. Mm. And I don't know if anybody's been on that. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. uh, CigarBid.com is a website where they sell cigars. But one of the, one of the th- features they have there is called Freefall. And what happens is you, you look for a, a batch of cigars you like. And, um, and they'll give you the MSRP, the Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. So say it's, um, I don't know, say it's six cigars and it's $60, okay? And then little by little, the price starts to fall. And as you watch it, the price will fall. And it'll go all the way down to very low. And then it bounces back up again. So if you watch it two or three times, you kind of figure out where the bottom is. Mm. And right before that, you can buy it and get very good prices. Mm. I've gotten... Um, Basically, ten dollars cigars for two dollars each. Damn, you oh, have wow. like a whole, uh, like a, a whole science. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's it's kind of addictive because you can, and they just don't have. I mean, they have all kinds of cigars. They have lighters. They have paraphernalia. Best know. thing about cigar, but I got to say, is it's a uh, it's a great way to get your hands on some like really primo stuff, without having to pay like crazy prices. Like they have some cigars that you normally won't see in other places, just because it is this kind of like auction type mm-hmm. spot and. I don't believe that they just sell their own cigars. You can kind of sell cigars like yeah, yeah. a lot of brands. Exactly. So it's it's uh, you, you can you can find some like like really 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 like some rare limited edition opuses or some Padron 50 years whatever. You know what I mean? Some of that really really good stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Phil, when you buy cigars, where do you usually get them? Well, as I said, uh, cigars are uh, usually a special occasion for me. And, and <laughs> tell you the truth, um, if I'm at a, uh, uh, an event or something, uh, I'll, I'll, the cigars will just be given to me, you know, and they're usually pretty nice cigars. Yeah. But there are a couple of cigar stores in the area that um, that uh, that uh, sometimes I'll go in and just check them out. But uh, usually, like I said, uh, uh, I've, I've received a lot of great cigars. Actually, you've given me some great cigars. Yes, I have. <laughs> well, I don't like to smoke alone. <laughs> not to, yeah, not to mention your uh, – by the way, I want to do a, a, just a, a, a quick mention of how much I've enjoyed your CD. I uh, love the music, man. Appreciate it, too. Well, thank you so much, Phil. That's uh, tonight, my new CD. Thanks, Phil. Phil is also a really great musician, and I had the pleasure when I was in California – the privilege of actually being able to go into the recording studio and play on Phil's new album, mm. his new song. So how how's that coming along? It's coming along good. We're still uh, working on some uh, new material, but uh, the the one you worked on with me is complete. And um, yeah, I'll send you a copy of it. That's great. We'll air it. F- yeah, F- Phil, Phil Gonzalez from California. Phil, what kind of music do you play? If you don't mind me asking. I would call it uh, adult contemporary. Oh, it's if I had to categorize it. I'd love to hear And that. Um, Well, listen, you guys, uh, it's been great talking with you. Can I leave you with one final quote? Yes. It's from uh, the great Winston Churchill. And he said, smoking cigars is like falling in love. First, you are attracted by its shape. You stay for its flavor, and you must always remember never, never to let the flame go out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's sweet. Beautiful. All right. Thanks. That's great, Phil. Thank you. And uh, have a good time in California, and I'll see you when I'm back there. All right. Sounds great. Have a great night, you guys. Thanks for calling in, Phil. That's Phil Gonzalez from California. Hey, you know, I love radio. Mm. I just love Mm. radio. Um, But we were talking about Cigar Bid, and I found that um, you can get a whole box or you can get five cigars. But And, I mean, a lot of cigar... Uh, online will sell sampler packs mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. but uh, I've gotten some very good prices there on the free fall at mm-hmm. Cigar Bid. Mm-hmm. Um, any anybody else? Any gems you found? Uh, no, I, I mean I just use JR Cigar. I have no patience, right? So yeah. I, I I looked at the auction sites and I just thought I'll, I'll have to spend two minutes figuring this out. Uh-huh. I'm done. Yeah. Well, I I also buy in stores too, but yeah. usually when I'm there, you know. Yeah. To be honest, uh, the last let's say ten boxes I purchased were all uh, outside of the U.S. You know, so it's it's tough. I I can't really chime in too much, uh, because like I'm mostly like, as far as my domestic cigars. So I used to work at a cigar lounge, so if I was get buying anything, it was from there. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. where I was exposed mm-hmm. to most of the domestic stuff. So if I do shop online, you know, because I there, I don't, there's no guy I can go to to buy a box of Cubans. At least not anything where I feel like legitimate. So I would just order from Switzerland. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just yeah. so so that's that's usually where I get my stuff. And it's a little tough. There's it's not really. 
it's a kind of a different situation. Yeah. You know what I mean when yeah. it comes to buying Cubans. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of people um, around the United States that you know they're nearest cigar stores 250 miles away. Yeah. So, sure. so that the online has become a real important thing. Now, here's an interesting thought, um, and here's a question, Artie. You might know the answer. Okay. Is um, when I was very young. And actually how I began cigar smoking at about 12 years old, uh, my grandfather, who was right off the boat from Sicily, um, pretty much was the one who I spent most of my time with in my younger days. And he always smoked a cigar. He always had a cigar with him. And usually he had one of two brands. It was either an Italian uh, cigar called Di Noble mm. or an Italian s cigar called Parotti, P-A-R-O-T-D-I, Parotti. And he... Um, um, and sometimes they were, these were soaked in rum or anisette or something. Mm -hmm. And he'd always smoke one of those. And they were they were kind of hard, but actually they were pretty flavorful. Mm, they smelled like licorice? Yeah, or, mm -hmm. or like whatever they were dipped in rum mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Whiskey. So, uh, I'm sorry, was there a question? Yeah, the question is, do you, are you familiar with those? And of course. You know, yeah. tell, tell us about them. Oh, hell yeah. They're awesome. So, they're old school style. Uh, they're, they're rolled um, really like, uh, like it's called, it's called, it's called, it's in the style of a fuma. So Fuma is a cigar that like is is the roller's private cigar. You know, when you roll your own cigars, like if I roll my own cigar, I don't take too much effort into it, uh, into the shape. I focus mostly on the way it smokes and the flavor. I don't really care how it looks, right? Because it's it. Yeah. Why, why am I going to take an extra? So that's what it is. It's almost like a farmer cigar. You know what I mean? So it's got that nice rustic shape. Uh, normally, when people smoke them, they chop them in half because uh, uh, it's not. If if like I feel like most people who s would smoke them all the way. They normally would rather just smoke a regular cigar, but people usually smoke those like the Denobles. Um I'm not familiar with the f second brand that you mentioned. Parodi. Oh, no, yes, no, I am. I am. Yeah. I've heard of them. And then there's like Tuscanis, yes. which are also very popular. Those smell like barbecue, like mm -hmm. it's like fire-cured tobacco. And you know what I mean? So, And they usually chop them in half and have like a quick five-minute smoke. And those cigars, there's not much emphasis on complexity and like uh, evolution and, and all those things that make like, let's say, like, you know, a good Padron what it is, or Davidoff, what it is. Uh -huh. uh, what those cigars give you is a great freaking draw, right? Pulls like a champ. Number two, it's just a punch in the face of flavor. And it's really it's really not, like, too bitter or crazy. And, you know, depending on, like you said, what they're soaked in, you get a little bit of uh, a little bit of something else. But, you, you know, you don't smoke it like, like, if I were to give a review of that cigar, it would just be like, all right, it tastes like, it tastes like licorice, okay, it yeah. tastes a bit like, darker licorice you know what i mean like yeah, there, yeah. there wouldn't be much change but they're very flavorful and delicious so that's pretty much what it is it's almost like a it's like a, it's it's actually a little bit of a throwback because back in the day that's how all cigars were like yeah. they were all lumpy pieces of like you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. <laughs> just lumpy like not pretty at all because back then nobody was really like i need this to look perfect you yeah. know what i mean like they were like oh it's lumpy but it tastes great i'll smoke this lumpy yeah. shit you know what i mean yeah, so it's like the the clint Eastwood movies you always had like the backwoods or something. exactly exactly, exactly. that's what it, yeah that's thing, what it is yeah. it's like a, it's 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 a it's a bit of a old school style of you know cigar cigar you know like rolling mm -hmm. hmm. no it's interesting it's a just another another branch of the many branches of mm -hmm. you know cigars mm -hmm. but yeah uh, I do like them now and then, every once in a great while. Yeah, like like I said, they're they're not like you know I I if someone's like gonna t ask me like, hey, um, you know, I want to try something I'm amazing. I'm not gonna be like, try this Tuscany. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But if someone's like, hey, uh, I'm grilling some burgers in the backyard, like, hey, let's chop this shit in half and smoke it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, the smoke of the grill with a little bit of the like, you know, little little bit of the barbecue flavor of the Tuscany or like sweetness of a De mm -hmm. is is nice when you're sipping little bit of something you know no right. it, it's nothing serious but it doesn't have to be that's the whole yeah. point yeah right exactly and and um as seriously as we take our cigars and as particular as we are a lot of times a good smoke is a good smoke mm -hmm. and and uh mo the the thing people say well, why do you smoke cigars well really for me it's the ultimate in relaxation it's the one time where the phone's not ringing i'm not you know uh, talking to a client about trademark uh, law and i'm not um trying to figure out what we have to do next on the radio station or what CD I'm producing next. I just kind of zone out, and that's my time to, to just relax with whatever beverage I'm drinking, alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to cut in real quick, but that's the beauty of cigars, right? Because they work both ways. Because when you're sitting down with somebody discussing some sort of business plan or trying to figure out a sort of like, like let's say you have a business partner or you have somebody that you're working on a project with, 
you light up a stogie, you bring out a piece of paper with a pen, and, and then you just start. You know what I mean? Like yeah. smoking usually gets the creative juices flowing. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's great for both. It's great for when you want absolutely nothing in your head, and it's great for when you want to think too. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? So that's why it's awesome. I'm sorry. Yeah, Gordon, no, no, you were saying? no, no. I was I was just, but I I do feel the same way. For I when I'm trying to be creative, when I decide, you know, when I have to think out of the box, mm -hmm. right for the business. I find if you know if I'm sitting outside with a cigar, that's getting rid of all of the day-to-day -day noise, mm -hmm. and it's letting me move into a bigger space where mm -hmm. I'm thinking a year out, two years mm -hmm. out. Yeah, I, so I find that it works both ways. But for me, a lot of time, it's it's emptying my head and yeah. just looking at the stars and yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's very relaxing time. I mostly smoke cigars at night or in the evening, mm -hmm. and luckily um, in New York City at my. Uh, apartment we have a, a, a rather large patio which mm. f for everybody else in the country are going huh what are you talking about <laughs> we <laughs> so just go back on the south deal. 40 and light up mm. but in new york any outdoor space is precious could be a balcony <laughs> you know it could be leaning out your window on your mm -hmm. fire escape in my case we have a really nice patio and the uh sm smoking laws uh, in new york have become so oppressive i mean you used to be able to smoke anywhere um then i said well you can't smoke in a restaurant but you can smoke in a bar then I said, no, you can't smoke in a bar, but you can smoke, like, outside the bar, outside the restaurant. Now you can't smoke outside the bar or the restaurant. You have to be, like, 40 feet away from, mm. you can't, like, sit down out on an outside table mm. and smoke anymore. So it becomes, and you can't smoke in a park, and you can't smoke, in, you know. So they have so many laws that are repressive that having any outdoor space that you can smoke, especially in New York where we only get about, you know, a portion of the year where you can be outside right. smoking, you know. I'm yeah. conflicted. I am. I am. Because I got to say, I kind of feel for people who don't smoke in a way, you know, like, can you can you imagine if like people around you are walking around with incense all the time? Like I would be I would be pissed. I don't know about <laughs> you guys. So I am a little bit sympathetic uh, to those folks. Do I think that uh, they need to go like so crazy with the laws where like I can actually get a ticket for smoking like, in, in, you know, somewhere? That's ridiculous. Right. That's a bit crazy. But again, it's it's. It, you got you know i don't know like i think i think there should be a law where you can't smoke 30 feet next to a hospital yeah you know what i mean like hospital to do, yeah. you know and, any really it having the ability to go to the cigar lounge mm -hmm. if, if you're from where i'm from you can't go in you, there's nowhere you can go to smoke yeah. and they're now looking at you know trying to ban it on uh, balconies try to ban people smoking in their own condominiums if you live in a shared uh, resident mm -hmm. because and i i must admit i'm sympathetic again mm -hmm. right i don't want be with you know next door neighbor or a bomb yeah, and sharing the exactly. ventilation space with someone who's smoking yeah, all the yeah, time yeah. So. but you know um the thing is that I, I feel like bars and restaurants like i think you should be able to smoke in bars and restaurants and i'll tell you exactly why because i feel like that's the business owner's choice yeah. right like i feel like he's the, paying the rent exactly i feel like the business owner should be able to choose like okay well i want customers that you know don't like smoke so i'm gonna ban smoking in my right. restaurant or you know like uh, i want to allow smoking in my restaurant so uh like i'm gonna lose business but that's my choice yeah. you know what i mean you may gain business too. exactly well it, yeah it goes both ways but what i'm saying is i feel like it should be if i have a business i should be able to run it as i like and i understand that you know businesses have certain criteria like health codes and and all that and and maybe that might be like delving into that kind of territory and that i don't know anything about but i mean like we before there was allowed you know what i mean and you know now it's yeah. not it's kind of it's i think it makes yeah. no sense well uh, it, it really does sometimes in my opinion the laws get pretty oppressive and um um it, it I don't like smoking when I'm eating, so I'm probably not going to go to a smoking restaurant. But again, like you said, let the mm -hmm. owner decide. I definitely like to smoke when I'm having a drink, mm -hmm. especially alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I would very much like to be in a bar where I could smoke mm -hmm. a cigar, which, again, was the norm until, you know, uh, uh, just a few years ago and political correctness and everything else said, no, you can't. And, and uh, Gordon brought up a really good point. In New York... We have some uh, very nice cigar lounges. We had a lot more. Bloomberg, our ex-mayor, closed a lot of them down. Mm -hmm. But um, we do have the Carnegie Club, Soho, mm -hmm. um, Cigar Inn, um, some great cigar lounges where you can go have a drink, a full bar, and smoke and not um, not have to worry about it. Um, that's very – those those are our – our uh, what our havens, you mm -hmm. know, our mm -hmm. sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. Right, and I yeah, I don't know why they can't. I mean, to me, that it's it's a sensible decision. You say, okay, there's some. 
if those places become too packed so nobody you know can mm. get in then you're mm. like well we need more of them yeah. I, I don't see that you can't I make more no. it's, it's illegal yeah. well this but I mean, you, you could change the rules right so no, of course. in terms yeah, of yeah, setting yeah. the rules mm. it's like look we have we have some of these they're well attended but not They're overly busy mm-hmm. and you know so we've got about the right number maybe we need a few more a few less but mm-hmm. i you know as opposed to everything is an all or nothing situation mm-hmm. i appreciate that some people might want to go to a bar and not mm-hmm. have to smell smoke and other people would like to be able to smoke and yeah. i don't know why we can't do both I, I don't see i don't see why either i think anybody who wants to start a cigar lounge should have the ability to to get it you can't in new york you can get a permit you can't the only way you can get one is to grandfather it's it about in. It's about smoking indoors. That's that's see that's yeah. how they did it. They changed the rules about the rules of in, smoking indoors, and that pretty much yeah. closed off all the opportunity. Right, but they really should have um, a way you could apply to do that, mm-hmm. and um, and and they mess with the laws because there are a few lounges that have been able to uh, be open, but the problem is number one they have to be like a cigar store that has a little place to smoke. Mm -mm. And number two, you can't serve alcohol. Mm -mm. And what do most people do when they smoke cigars? Yeah, they want to drink 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 alcohol. Uh, Real quick, you mentioned uh, that these places are quote-unquote sanctuaries, and I I think that's a wonderful term to use because it it almost, like, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining or victimizing of myself, but it almost feels like it's under attack, right, the whole cigar smoking scene, like, as far as the federal laws, the state laws, the tax laws, the the smoking laws, it's like, yeah, right, so there's always, like, legislation kind of, like, feels like you can't, being put down, you know, it's obviously not as bad as, you know, other things going on here in America, but it's, it's one of things that affects us right but there's one place it's like almost like you said a sanctuary it's called paley park you guys know about this i heard about it no paley park is freaking awesome like uh some of my facts are going to be wrong but that doesn't matter that much right so with it's it's owned by like the owner of like uh, one of the pharmacy branches like cvs or doing i don't know i might be wrong but it's some rich guy and uh i think his name was paley or whatever it doesn't matter it's this park uh it's it's in midtown and it's specifically made for cigar smoking. So it's like it got this nice waterfall backdrop. I, I don't even remember the address. You see it? But well, we can Google it. And you can Google it. it. Yeah, it's Paley no, Park. No, I remember someone telling yeah. me. I didn't remember the name of the park, mm-hmm. but I remember they were saying it's this great park and you could smoke outside. It's, it's specifically it's made. Park. Yeah, it's specifically. Yeah. It's owned by a private company just because this some rich uh, guy in New York got pissed off that all this like <laughs> stuff was going down. And he decided to make this, like as you said, sanctuary. And it's outside, and it's wonderful. You can go there, and somebody will give you an ashtray, and they'll clean the ashtrays. It's great, and all for free. All this comes out of a, like a private fund or whatever. Yeah, it's called Paley Park, P A L E Y Park, mm-hmm. and it's three East Fifty Third Street, New York City, one zero zero two two. So that's uh, three East Paley Park. Mm-hmm. Closes at eight p.m. Opens at eight a.m. Mm-hmm. Great information, Artie. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. And uh, I personally do not know a single, any other spot like that in the whole city. Uh, that's great to know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just gave us a gem. Yeah, 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 going, uh, yeah. Next nice day, you know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the end of our show. Um, Johnny Mandolin Show here. I want to thank Artie the Cigar Guy and Gordon, my cigar-smoking buddy uh, at a Friendly Cigar Group. And... Um, and, of course, I want to thank Jade, our engineer, who's wonderful. Jade, what kind of cigar do you like? <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at me going, uh-uh. <laughs> but we love Jade. Great engineer. All right, folks, thanks again. Always join us Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks to Phil Gonzalez, who uh, called in all the way from California. We love you guys, and uh, thanks again. And you guys, of course, my question is always, will you come back? Hell yes. You know. <laughs> you know that it. didn't take a second. All right, thanks again, folks. Listen in. Don't touch that mouse because we got a lot more shows coming right after the Johnny Mandolin Show here. Thanks to Sexton Records for sponsoring us. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, good night. Good night.
We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how, and we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids need to know the dangers and how to avoid them. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal. So talk with your kids, because when you talk, they hear you. Hi, Grandma. Can Nina come over for dinner? Sure. I've been meaning to ask you, what would happen if someone offered you a drink? Grandma! If anyone ever does, I want you to say, no, I have too much respect for my family and I don't want to get in trouble. I promise, Grandma. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit...